Welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos. Tonight, I want to let you know what I'm working on. Uh, I have run into a subject that is absolutely thrilling me. And it's because it ties into some ancient concepts as well as to our very ultra-modern scientific and physics concepts and the UFOs. The aliens, the, uh, the interdimensional beings. I see why Jacques Vallée uh, thought that they were interdimensional beings. It's beginning to make much more sense to me now. And I haven't even finished reading his book yet. Uh, shame on me, but I'm not going to talk about his book right now. This subject involves the quantum physics of the Planck length and the Planck time. Half of us don't even know what that is. It involves the attempted unification of Einstein's relativity, which deals with the large cosmos, and quantum physics, which deals with the ultimate tiny stuff, which we are all built from. Now, the quantum field is not where physical reality has any meaning. Stuff, you know, particles, little billiard balls, the atoms, all of those analogies, all of those ideas are wrong once you get below the Planck length. And that's why that becomes so important in my discussion that I am researching right now. I'm going to try like crazy to present some information tomorrow night on that. Um, it's tough stuff to figure out and learn. I'm trying to make sure my ideas are comporting with current quantum physics, with current relativity understanding. And I'm just going over a bunch of materials right now. So many have asked me about the scientific aspect of UFOs, and this is what makes the Tedesco brothers so interesting because they are the nuts and bolts of it, and we will be doing more together here just shortly. And yet, the UFOs themselves, because of the way they have interacted with so many tens of thousands of people worldwide. They've healed people. They have pulled people right out of their house, through the roof, up into the air and into their craft. It's just astonishing. It's science fiction. You say, no, that, that can't possibly happen. And yet it does. Their ability to go from zero to 80,000 feet high in under one second is absolutely physically impossible in so many respects. Not only the speed, but if someone is inside that craft that does that, the G-force of that type of acceleration, not to mention that abrupt stop, it would turn anything into the inside of that craft into jelly. It's just beyond our comprehension. And the nature of the universe, the different dimensions, how do those play into this? How does our spirituality, our ability to open our minds to a new reality, which I would define as our spirituality meter. Are we so brittle 
that we won't entertain any new ideas anymore. We think we understand what reality is, period, end of story. If it doesn't match our view, it's automatically either woo-woo or stupid or just wrong. I believe that could be seen as a measure of our own personal spirituality. I would propose that a a spirituality is a certain type of flexibility. You know, we ask God in prayer for help. Or we ask God in prayer for, please open up my mind so that I can pass this exam in quantum physics tomorrow. Because this stuff's over my head. And I need my mind, my brain to function, to work well. I need to be able to recall what I have read. I need to be able to recall my mathematical calculations. This this desire for extra help means you do need to be flexible or you wouldn't be studying quantum physics with me. You would need to be flexible, which I would call a level of your spirituality, or you wouldn't be listening to my adventures about studying and learning and trying to somewhat comprehend this UFO phenomenon in its entirety, from a skeptic point of view, from a believer point of view, from a religious point of view, from a woo-woo point of view, from a scientific point of view, from a nuts and bolts point of view, every point of view has something to bring to the table. I would suggest our ability to accept that and be able to mix it up and try to grasp that we don't have the totality of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And so we need to keep forging forward, changing our minds when the evidence calls for it, saying no to an idea if it just cannot fit, not our understanding, but reality as we understand it. And there's a catch because the UFO phenomenon really doesn't fit. And yet so many people are indicating that it's here, it's now, it's happening, and it's changing their lives. So that's a critical factor I would propose. Uh, It's not easy. I'm going to try to do a deep dive into meaning I'm going to try to explain it as easy as I can. Some ideas in physics, along with how the quantum physics has come along and changed our understanding. It has changed how we apply physics to the cosmos, as well as to atoms, as well as to time, as well as to three-dimensional, as well as to spirituality. We're evolving. Some of you don't like that word. Okay, well, we're changing then. That's the same thing. We're changing because the new experiments, not only of general and special relativity in the cosmological realm, but the new experiments in the ultra fantastically, ridiculously, simply incomprehensible, small world of the quantum, these experiments are being performed over and over again. New experiments are coming out that is showing us what we thought we knew was truth 
is not. And a measure of our spirituality is why I would propose how flexible are we? You know? Otherwise, you're going to be left in the caveman days of the 1900s. And we're so far beyond that. We're developing quantum computers and artificial intelligence, man. That's not a future. That's right now. It is here. And believe me, it has really crazy ramifications for truth and reality, as well as, amazingly enough, this whole subject of the NHI, the non-human intelligence, the UFOs, the crazy types of aliens that we're told are real now. There's not just one kind. There could be five or six kind. Some people propose 56. Some people propose 375. How the hell do we know any of this? That's where our flexibility has to, you know, come into play. Not that you have to accept and believe everything. I certainly don't. But my suggestion would be that we at least attempt to put ourselves in a position to where we can somewhat test it or understand how someone else has tested it and come to a conclusion that perhaps we are not at all comfortable with, but that's where the evidence is leading. And so it's not about how comfortable I am with this. It's about what's real. And I've got bad news for you. My very approach of, yeah, let's just keep it real, has some unspoken assumption and biases that I am discovering where I am wrong in even taking that attitude. Well, I just want to keep it real. How do you define real? It is not the same with everybody. And it's not what I've been thinking. And that's spooky to me. I'm not going to lie to you. What, what do you mean it's not what I've been thinking? <laughs> so how am I going to be able to keep it real if what I think is real isn't real? Then I'm wrong in accepting anything that fits my bias and I'm wrong in not changing my approach and accepting what's even more real, even though it's some, in some respects, ridiculously different than what I'm thinking real is. So uh, this is a game of hide and seek. This is, <laughs> this is a, I'm hoping an open-ended discussion within me so that I can continue sharing it with you because I am finding places where just eight months ago when I started this, I am entirely out of date and potentially entirely wrong about what I thought was real. So a lot of my criticisms may not be valid. A lot of my answers are at best incomplete. Now, that's why so many, like Diane Pasolka, Jeffrey Mishloff, uh, Jeffrey Kripal, uh, Whitley Strieber, that's why so many have said that we have to maintain a serious humility in face of eternity because we're not used to that. We work, we live, we exist, we think in time.
What if that's an illusion? Then what? Now, we haven't got a clue what's real. That can get sombering. You know, it can sober even the most drunk of people. It can sober them up pretty quick. So, rather than coming from a position of, I know what's real, and I'm going to tell you that truth, and you need to accept it or you're wrong, uh, people who do that are in for an absolute spectacular rude awakening, especially if you continue trying to learn. No, we're all on plateaus, different levels of plateaus, and none of us should be stopped or resting on those plateaus because no matter how sure we are that we have the truth, we're wrong because we're finite beings for one thing. And we cannot see the whole truth. When you look up into the sky, you're only looking one direction, yet the whole universe revolves around you in a 360 degree sphere and you can't see it whole. You can't see far enough nor wide enough. So you automatically have an incomplete understanding of the real. And three dimensions is not all there is, but that's what we live in mostly. So we default to that assumption that this is what is real. And we have to be very careful about that. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Hopefully I will be able to put this together tomorrow. I am studying like crazy right now so that I can at least attempt to give you the flavor of where I'm heading with this. This might take a few videos. But for me, it's exciting because I'm learning new materials. I am growing and stretching and getting, oh, hey, aha, I never thought of it that way. I love those aha insights. Those are invaluable to me. That tells me I don't know enough yet. Well, I get aha insights every day because of my research and reading and watching YouTube videos. So I would advise the same course of action. So. I am not the same person mentally, physically, spiritually, intellectually, or emotionally as I was when I started this eight months ago. And neither should you be. If you've gotten to where you're always the same person, you may as well be dead because you've muffed it. Your brain is much grander than that. Use the best part of you that God gave us. The gray stuff. So anyway, that's uh, what I'm working on. Thank you for your indulgence. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your uh, your encouragement, the fun we're having together, uh, the comments. Hit the like and subscribe. Share these videos with as many people as you can. And uh, I will catch up to you just as soon as I get more material prepared, which is most definitely on the way from about every cotton pick and angle. It's coming at me from all angles even from way off behind me, and it's surprising me what's hitting me in the back of my head when I turn around and look at that piece of knowledge and I'm going, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, well, you have to integrate all of that into a more complete conceptual whole, even though we'll never see the whole. And the irony is we are the whole. <laughs> that is some heavy stuff, man. All right. I'll catch up to you shortly. Have a great night.